from Vancouver. She's a founding member of the Aboriginal Action Network. She's also a collective member of Rape Relief and a terrific uh, Aboriginal activist. So we'd like to hear from Laura Holland. Please give her a warm welcome. of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. I too am a visitor on Coast Salish territory and I would like to thank the Coast Salish for allowing us to be on their territory, to live, to work, to raise our families and to gather here today to stop war. I see a lot of good people here today. People with good hearts and good minds and people who want to stop war. It takes a lot of courage for you to be here today, to tell the oppressive state that you will not tolerate war anymore. You deserve recognition for that. Give yourselves a big hand. I've been invited here today to talk about oppression of my people and First Nation people all across Canada and the targeted recruitment of First Nations youth. I'm also here to speak to you because there's a war going on in your own backyard here today. The Indian wars have not stopped against the Aboriginals in Canada. The occupation in Canada is a reality. Racism, patriarchy and sexism have intentionally attacked and destroyed our matriarchal and matrilineal systems, devaluing women, girls and our ways of life. The government's Department of Indian Affairs has been used as a weapon to control Aboriginal peoples and it guarantees our oppression. The Canadian government does not allow us as Aboriginals to, de to determine our own membership. There is still a fight for Native women and their children to be counted and recognized as First Nations and be given Indian status. The denial and outright refusal of Indian status is another way of blocking 200,000 First Nations people access to control of lands and resources. It maintains our impoverishment, forces men, women and families to rely on the state. It forces women to stay in violent marriages or die in violent marriages and has not addressed matrimonial property rights for women on reserves. It forces destitute women and children into prostitution and other crimes against the state. This is where we are often criminalized and demoralized. Some of us have not forgotten the slaughter of indigenous peoples in North America, the reserve system, 90,000 survivors of residential schools, unsolved murders of First Nations people, 500 missing Aboriginal women, the missing women from the downtown east side and the highway of tears. We will not forget the respected Harriet Nahaney, a 71-year-old Aboriginal woman who was jailed because she dared to be an activist. She dared to be an activist and oppose the destruction of Native lands and Native ways of life. As feminists, and indigenous women. We oppose the discriminatory, racist, and sexist laws that are used in the cultural genocide of Canada's First Nations. Our position is essentially that actions and attitudes, mainly patriarchy, racism, and sexism, are expressions of domination that are all connected because they are rooted in a false, hierarchical worldview that destroys community and equality. It is particularly dangerous to women and children and all who are indigenous to war-torn countries. Racism, patriarchy and sexism desensitize us and legitimizes the killing of innocent people and the destruction of indigenous governments and ways of life. The results for women and children are being trafficked for work or prostitution, displacement and forced migration, poverty, and many other forms of violence, including deprivation of native rights, human rights, and even food and water. It also includes, it includes imprisonment of our men who are activists and are accused of being insurgents.
As a feminist in the women's movement, I oppose patriarchy, racism, and sexism. I and non-violent peacemaking solutions. We honor our First Nation veterans as elders, yet we are critical of the state's treatment of them and attitude towards them. Historically, when Aboriginals went to war, they were forced to give up what little rights they had under the Indian Act. And when they were forced to give up their Indian status, it meant the whole family lost their rights. When they returned, these rights were not reinstated, and they did not enjoy the same rights, pensions, and respect as non-Native veterans. In fact, First Nation veterans once again had to fight here in their homelands to at least be recognized as veterans. With one hand, the state keeps us oppressed, and with the other hand, attempts to recruit our children. Our culture is exploited and romanticized with programs such as Bold Eagle to glorify recruitment. It promises youth as young as 16 years of age training, accommodation, paid travel expenses to Wainwright, Alberta, and payment. I think we've heard this before. It's for our own good. It sounds like residential school to me. This time our youth are promised culture and tradition in the way of visiting a family at a powwow. Are these extravagant promises or are they bait? Is it bait for those of us with the least power and privilege and those of us who are the most oppressed? Recruitment of our children will not liberate us from the discriminatory laws that keep us impoverished. Recruitment will not guarantee a life without racism and sexism. It does not give us hope for employment, training, equality, without having to promise to fight a war, to kill other indigenous people, or to die. We demand an end to targeted recruitment of First Nations youth. Each and every one of you has a voice. Each and every one of you has the power to insist on non-violent peacemaking solutions. And you can all demand an end to the Indian wars here in Canada by insisting on fair sharing of resources and speedy settlement of land claims. Honorable settlement now! All of you here today have the power to speak out. You can tell this government that reconciliation with Aboriginal people is not enough. You can demand redress to right the wrongs that have been done to the Aboriginals in the Indian Holocaust. In closing, I want to say, let's bring those troops home. Let's bring those troops home to a Canada that we can all be proud of. A Canada that treats all of its citizens with respect, humanity, and dignity. Thank you.